Welcome to new Selfish OS podcast and this time around it's all about the brand new version of Selfish OS 3.1 in this case the early access version 3.1011 that I have here installed on my Sony Xperia XA2 uh, but it's also available for the um, Yola One phone, for the Yola tablet, for the Xperia um, X and for other devices as well and uh, just to give you a proof that this uh, YOLA 1 is running Selfish OS 3.1 after six years almost uh, this device is still supported you can see here this is after a bit of loading version 3.1.11 3.1.0.11 so this is still supported which is a nice addition of course also the Gemini PDA is supported and brings new features but I think the most important part here in this new release is the XA2 release because it's finally out of beta so the version that is installed here can be uh, yeah, called a final the first final version and what this first final version brings is an out of beta fingerprint support so if I tap with my uh, finger here on the back you will see the display will turn on it will ask um, me for my security code I can put my finger back on the fingerprint and then it will unlock automatically so this is the way how to unlock here so it's differently from Android or from other um, iOS or Apple devices where you have to just tap once for turning on the display you either enter the security code then or just uh, tap on the fingerprint again to read your fingerprint to unlock the device uh, this is how it works now on the XA2 and I think it's a good implementation it works pretty good for my fingerprint so far um, the most important features added or uh, worked on here in this release especially for the XA2 is Alien Dalvik support it's the first device that supports Alien Dalvik Android runtime in version 8 and 8.1 I think it is and uh, this brings lots and lots of stability fixes in this new version and uh, the option for example in events view if I have something like this a notification here for example that I uh, have two new updates in the uh, Aptoid store I can press it and it will then uh, should then <laughs> load the app in theory this at least has been fixed in many occasions in this case I think it's just the uh, normal effect that you get if you want to demonstrate something like this it is not working let's try this again open Aptite see there are two updates available okay close it there's no notification now but in theory it should work. There's better out of memory handling for Android applications. So if I open up, uh, for example, Android, you will see also it uh, loads pretty quickly. I can refresh stuff here and uh, get notifications and it works pretty much very good. Also Telegram chat and other chat applications will not uh, bother with uh, notifications. The notifications that usually will nag you about something uh, are also blocked now. It's possible now for Alien Dalvik to uh, import Android contacts also into the uh, native people application. Then also you can see the people application has been rewritten. This is how it looks like now. Uh, and uh, I have two example um, users here. For example, Fuba. If I click on this, I can copy the name or I can edit. And then you can see the new uh, edit dialog for editing. Uh, for editing uh, contacts and you can see that um, we have the option to add a photo first name last name company phone number email address we can add a note we can add a address a date for example if I click here of uh, on date I can add a date just like for example here uh, May 23rd or something like this and uh, this will be then uh, place as a date or can say it's a wedding a birthday engagement house employment or memorial uh, so it is a lot more redefined uh, and a lot more easier to define stuff uh, for a new context that you want to add uh, just you can add a website as well you can select a website select a label uh, that you can have here if you like to uh, do this so this is pretty much a very good rewrite of the contacts application that is much more logical than it was before. 
this is not everything. There were some fixes um, regarding searches. For example, if you have longer lists and you try to scroll automatically, the keyboard will disappear. A nice little addition uh, that uh, bothered me in the earlier releases, especially if you have more than those two contacts that I have here. Um, then there are of course some fixes for Bluetooth. So if you are a heavy Bluetooth user, the new version of Blues 5.5 uh, should offer you better stability. It works pretty fine on the XA2. It's not so well working on my uh, Sony Xperia X device that I have here. Um, here I still have a bit of uh, Bluetooth problems or issues when it comes to audio handling and uh, Wi-Fi. So if I surf the web via Wi-Fi and have uh, Bluetooth connected to a uh, Bluetooth speaker, you can hear the crackling noises and uh, sometimes even skipping of audio. Uh, calendar fixes are also included here. The calendar itself has been, I think, slightly improved uh, on uh, one or two occasions here. You can see the calendar. And uh, what they also improved here is uh, the Caldev um, synchronization, which should work fine. It was working fine for me with Nextcloud anyway, but uh, for those who have uh, maybe other Caldev uh, implementations, it should work better now. There's been also a redesign for the telephone application, so the main application for a smartphone, usually. As you can see here, um, I don't have a call history history here yet because I deleted it, but um, we, have, we now have three tabs on the top, history, people, and dialer. So these are the new three tabs, and you can just swipe through the tabs to, to get to the dialer, for example. I can enter now a phone number, and I can swipe back to my history, or I can swipe to my people's. Uh, people. I'm not sure why uh, there are no people uh, here because I have clearly people in the uh, in the accounts list in the, in the people list. Uh, I can add contacts here and it will open up my people application with the option to add accounts. The only thing that I can imagine is that there's no telephone number assigned to it. So this is why maybe there are no people um, appearing here. You still have the uh, option to show details, for example, for history or so show only essentials, it will then list a little bit more information about your history. And you still have a drop down menu also for the dialer if you want to send a message, a link to a contact, or save a phone number as a contact. So, this is a new phone application, a good rewrite, and I think it's very uh, easy to use. And I think also for people coming from Android or iOS, more um, yeah, clean or more clearer how to get to the history and, and, and uh, get to the context list. So this is the telephone app, pretty nice rewrite. Uh, you can see this is a tab-based navigation. There are some other applications also using this tab-based uh, uh, tab navigation and I can uh, see also some other applications, also third-party applications, maybe um, using this tab-based navigation uh, for the future to make it more consistent with the applications provided by Yola. Then the email app uh, has been improved. I'm not sure if I have emails here, but the email app, uh, no accounts yet, but the email app has uh, been improved. The active sync uh, synchronization is uh, far better than it was before. And you have the option also if there's an appointment or something like this to import it. And uh, this also um, it goes for invitations. You can then automatically import them to your calendar. And email app signing is now supported for emails. I think you have to add an account. And then for general accounts, if you have a general email account, you can then in the manual setup also uh, set up uh, um, um, signatures here if you'd like to. So you can have uh, email signing. Uh, available here. Email encryption is not available yet, but I think it will come in the future. The signing email um, uh, signing support is currently experimental. The messages, messages app uh, uses also a new design. Uh, some of them you will maybe not notice so much. This is a messages app. Just I can choose a uh, recipient here and I can type a message in here. There's in slightly uh, uh, redefined icons here and there, and uh, this is, I think, also a good thing. Then what I noticed um, uh, updating on all of my devices is that the updater uh, is a lot better than it was before. Before, I still had problems here and there. 
that the update had failed and I had to use the command line tool to update my system. Now the OS updater is uh, a lot better than it was before, improved in stability and it works more reliable. Then of course uh, the People app has been redesigned, I also showed you this, and uh, the Documents app has been redesigned in uh, a few ways. You can see still a list of documents but it has some new features. If I click on this you can see I have a PDF here. I can get my information here, simple and easy. Uh, and I can scroll to see more information. I can delete or share this document. But I also have annotation functions, so uh, I can click a path to annotate and then write a note for this annotation thingy. And you can see here a little hint. Uh, I have also the option to uh, share stuff uh, but I also have the option to um, sign something so if I have a contract or something that I need to sign which is a PDF I can uh, click on this uh, sign thingy here and then boop, 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 sign it in theory it needs of course a field uh, where signature is necessary which is a nice addition then the documents application can now also view text files only view text files so if we for example uh, take a look at this file it's a, with a web link you can see I can uh, tap on it this is also a new feature in uh, Cypress 3.1 it offers me to open up this URL with different uh, applications uh, and I can choose an application to continue in this case I can choose the normal default uh, Surface S browser or I can open it up with my own browser which is called WebCat which is a nice addition so I have now the option to choose uh, which application I want to use for links. Uh, I only saw this now for links also in the email application if I click on an email it will ask me in which browser I want to open it up. Uh, I'm not sure if other applications uh, will follow this and I didn't uh, get any um, option to see to set some application as default application uh, natively in, in, in Safish as yet. Uh, but this is now an option which is a nice addition. Uh, then if we take a look at the settings you can see that there are some new settings for example in gestures you ha now have the option to show hints and tips and also disable hints and tips so hints and tips might occur sometimes uh, and are necessary for new users uh, to get to know to uh, get to know Safish S and the gest gesture system and how it works and how to use certain applications and you can turn it off if you don't need it uh, so this is a new thing here uh, then uh, ignore Alien Dive Control and Patch Manager because I installed them uh, via patch. Uh, there is NFC that was available also in an earlier version but it's here available still. And uh, there is the device lock now where you can uh, add a fingerprint if you like to add a fingerprint. The procedure is the same as on the Sony Xperia X device. Nothing uh, major changed here. Um, there are certificates still, there are certificate updates still. Uh, this uh, basically did not change much. Uh, in Android support, there is a big change. Again, for experts, very interesting for those who want to run uh, MicroG with spoofing support, there's now the option to disable Android system package verification, which is basically the spoofing, and this allows you to, uh, no, which is basically the, the option to allow spoofing support for MicroG, and then you can, MicroG is an uh, alternative um, system, an open source system for simulating, emulating the Google Play services, and uh, this allows uh, some more applications to run uh, natively in this um, Alien Dalvik uh, runtime uh, with uh, simulated uh, Play, Play Store support. So this is an option which is also pretty nice, a pretty nice addition. There are so many other things that uh, Yola has added here and you can go to the togetheryola.website uh, togetheryola.com website togetheryola.com website and you can then uh, see bugs. You can report bugs, of course, if you have some issues with the new version. Uh, but you can also take a look at the release notes uh, with some uh, more features mentioned, probably. And there is the change log, the detailed change log of the new version 3.1.0. And uh, this will list everything that has been changed here uh, in this new a version like packages added, like minor little changes to and tweaks to little applications uh, that are uh, here. 
and also developer um, uh, things are here are mentioned here just like for example there are some changes for developers in the silica api some new additions and new features that you can use and uh, yeah basically make your apps more advanced with the included features of silica and there as you can see there's a long list of all the packages that, that have been updated that have been updated so it's a very very long list uh, this is basically everything for this little demonstration of Selfish S 3.1011. Uh, uh, this new Selfish S update runs pretty smoothly on all the devices I tested so far. Um, the Gemini PDA still is a uh, beta version, I would say, this version for, for of Selfish S, because, for example, the camera module support is a bit bad. Uh, so, you know, there's an additional camera module uh, on the back which is not supported apparently still so only the front camera is supported and uh, yeah we have to see when Yola will support this but as at least the XA2 is now out of beta and should be usable as a daily driver for those who want to try it out. Alien Dalvik support here is a little bit flimsy I had to restart it uh, two times already here on my XA2 device but it runs much much better than before uh, the wireless LAN detection should work now, according to Yola. I'm not sure what they mean by this. So it's now working with wireless LAN, and of course it should also work. All the Alien Dalvik, all the Android applications should work with the mobile data as well. But when it comes to uh, camera remote apps, for example, like the Fujifilm camera remote app that connects via Wi-Fi to my uh, Fujifilm cameras, uh, it does not work still. So not sure what's what's wrong there, but. Uh, either with Bluetooth or with Wi-Fi, it's not working. Either it's this app specifically, or it's a general issue that it's still not working with those apps that need to detect or need to directly access Wi-Fi. Uh, so this is still an issue here for this uh, device and this uh, Android runtime. So this is everything for this little demonstration of uh, Selfish S 3.1 early access version. Maybe they will change and fix some things here um, again for the final version, we'll see. But I hope you enjoyed this little uh, video demonstration and until the next time, see you.